Right, you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Ready, I'm ready, ready. I'm ready. You ready? <laughs> I was born ready, Phil. I was never born ready. You were created <laughs> in a off, laboratory. Just off my mum. <laughs> never born ready. You were the uh, product of <laughs> experiments. Mis misplacement, I was going to say, but yeah, I'll, I'll, do, I'll take it. <laughs> experiments. <laughs> Brought to you by Noah's Arcade. Hello. Hello. Hi, Phil. Hi, Stefan. Hi, Hi guys. Stefan. <laughs> Hi, people of the uh, listening public. Welcome to Vanderhof and Co. Vanderhof and Co. It's um, brought to you by Vanderhof and Co. Brought to you by Noah's Arcade UK. We are. Uh, it. Uh, it's not a new episode as such, is it? No, it is another episode, but it's not another ep episode. No, if we're that um. Makes any sense to anyone? Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> we're still picking through, uh, EGX interviews, our res yep. interviews, rather. We've just, they we've not been, yeah, we've not been able to, uh, kind of life has got in the middle of us being able to, uh, record. That blimmin' thing, that blimmin' thing called life. Yeah. Plus you had, um, you did, we had the event on Saturday. We did have the event on. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 event. Yeah, down at down at the pub Tony Hawks 2 everyone jumping on jumping on in setting into the competition we had a few people went into the competition yeah I think yeah I think when it got to a certain stage because people were putting in with like uh, 10,000 points to start off with and then I think one person hit in with 128 and then someone just smashed it out with 282,000 oh wow everyone was asking me what the score was and they were like uh, I probably won't enter because uh, no <laughs> And then someone comes and smashed it afterwards, like literally about half an hour before I, before we finished, <laughs> just smashed the score. And I was like, oh, okay. At least, uh, at least that was a few. Ah, oh, nice. So the winner took the prize pot, did they? They did indeed. And what so was the, like 26, uh, the prize pot? It was 26 pound in total. That's not too bad. No, it isn't. But plenty of people playing that everyone enjoyed themselves. Yeah. I, I think there's only a couple of times where it's a bit quiet, but. Because I was using my TV along with the other TVs, my my actual home TV. Oh, okay. Uh, for, for one of them, for one of the PlayStation ones. Everyone was mainly jumping on that one because it was one of the larger TVs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably <laughs> a bit easier that. to uh, to do uh, on a on a larger screen. I think only one person entered uh, on the N64 as a competition. Uh, they got like ten thousand points. <laughs> <laughs> I've never played the N sixty four version of uh, Pro Skater two. Don't think many people had. I, I, to be honest, I think most people were like I didn't even realise this was a thing. Yeah, it's um. Well, it. I was looking into information about it, and it came out like nearly a year after the main versions. It's made by someone else as well. Is it? Um, well, it's been ported by someone else, not made, but because um, obviously Activision made the Tony Hawk's on PlayStation One, mm -hmm. Treyarch made the port for Dreamcast, and then someone else I can't remember. Uh, someone else did the oh, what, never, was it never soft? No, someone else did it for uh, N64, I believe. Oh, okay. So it's a different port. See, because I that's why it looks terrible. <laughs> does it? Does it look bad? Does it? <coughs> yes the best one is actually the dreamcast version oh wow okay dreamcast i don't version is really, really yeah just it's polished really really polished oh i'll have to uh i'll have to check it out once i get my dreamcast and my copy back off yeah yeah i would <laughs> definitely recommend it it's really, really good the only other version i've played is uh the one that came out on game boy advance so i haven't played that because it, it was a it was a launch title Ah, uh, okay. So I got that and Super Mario Land, uh, Super Mario World 2, which is basically Super Mario Brothers 2. But, Good old uh, Super Mario. But yeah, that I remember that version not being too bad. Oh, sorry then. The N64 version was pretty bad, though. Oh, I'll, have to, uh, 
I'll have to track down a copy. Well, I'll, 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 borrow, I'll let you borrow mine if you want. Oh, yeah, nice. <laughs> forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I might... I'll just probably try and play it around yours. I don't think... I think once I've played half an hour of the of that version, I'll be like, mm, no. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. And can we turn the console off now? <laughs> yeah. I'll go just put the Dreamcast one back on. I'll be like, oh, no, fuck that. Yeah, I, yeah, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Dreamcast so good, N64 so bad. Yeah, which is a shame, really. But it is a shame. I mean, the N64 was never really... It was a, it was a strange... It had some really good strange games on it. Yeah, but it had some really real toss stuff as well. It did. It's a shame. Yeah. It's a shame. But yeah, we're well, not here to anyway. talk about Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. We're here to uh, talk EGX Res more EGX, EGX Res. The first up of our interviews was a game that you... I played. Yes, you played it, but you'd already had your eye on it prior to Res, oh, hadn't you? I have, yeah. I had my eye on it from... I think it was last year's EGX, or maybe even the E, uh, not EGX, uh, E3. Oh, E3. E3, last year's E3, or the year before's E3. I can't remember when it was first announced, mm. but it was announced a little while ago, and I watched it, and I was just amazed by it. Like, Are we keeping you up, Phil? A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> Considering that I usually go to bed at one o'clock in the morning. Yeah, you're definitely keeping me up. It's because you've, all you've done all day is play Uncharted. Oh, well, there is that, yeah. And it depends on what time of the day that people are listening to the podcast right now. I'm not going to lie. Because they, they could be listening on their way home at like four o'clock in the morning and there's me like fast asleep and I'm just yawning. Yeah. And I'm really not helping them stay so, awake for their bus home. <laughs> we're a gaming uh, gaming and entertainment podcast and sleep aid. Well, sometimes. <laughs> people falling asleep on their last bus. Just like, yeah, yeah. 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 Just, just don't blame us if you miss your stop. <laughs> <laughs> we have nothing to do with that. No. That is not our fault. That is the no. bus man's fault. But that's... Bus bus driver. <laughs> put a disclaimer on our uh, iTunes. Yeah, I think that's the way we do it. Right now. <laughs> Before anyone starts blaming us. Left, right and centre. Left, right and centre. So, the name of this game, Phil? Is Rhyme. It is. It's Rhyme. It's, um... So, who made... Is it is it made by a particular? Uh, have they made something before that you've um, you've played and liked? I should know <coughs> this really. No, not that I know of. To be honest, now I'm now I'm going to have to have a look as well. Because it's Tequila Works who are the publisher, and it's no, I'm just having... Tantalus Media are the developer. And would you believe it? They were the ones that ported. They did Legend of Zelda: Twilight Princess HD port for Wii U. South Park Rally. South Park Rally, SpongeBob, Park Rally. SpongeBob, Pony Friends 2. Oh, wow. Oh, my MX God. Versus eight. Manx TT Superbikes on the Saturn. Lemon egg. How have they done? Well, Top Gear Rally. Yeah, Mega Mind. So they've been making some games. Unreal 2. Oh, blimey. You'd think we'd know this beforehand. Yeah. House um, of the Dead, 1996. Well, there you go. Uh, yeah. Rhyme from the studio that brought you all of those everything that we've probably played apart from pony friends 2 apart from pony friends 2 i only played the first one <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I didn't make any friends off of it no <laughs> so pony kicked me in the face we didn't speak to anyone at tantalus media however we, we did speak to miguel from tequila works and tequila uh, works. and didn't he, uh, we were actually playing the full build, you were playing the full build of the game, weren't you? I was playing, playing the full build of the game. And, um, uh, he, he wouldn't was... let me go past a certain point, would he? No, he wouldn't let you walk into no, the light. Never go into the light. No, never go into the light. So If you pass out, never go into the light, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I so... don't know how I got out of it. <laughs> no, you were very lucky. Didn't I, I was very lucky. Didn't I say I was going to hold him back and you could, would just see how far you could get? Yeah. <laughs> I thought, I thought you said you might go and distract him with food or something and see if that would take his mind off of it, and I just walked straight through. Yeah. But uh, I don't want to wind them up too much. No. You know, they were they hadn't given us an interview at that stage. No, they hadn't. <laughs> Not quite. But, um, yeah, so I think we should uh, hand over now to four weeks ago. Up in the past. Four weeks ago, us, and Miguel from Tequila Works talking about rhyme. <laughs> Okay, folks, we are here down at EGX Res 2017. Yeah. Uh, it's Stefan and Phil. 
Um, and uh, yeah, we've just been playing Rhyme. Rhyme, yeah. And uh, we're lucky enough to have somebody here to uh, chat with us about the game itself. Sir, thank you for joining us. Uh, you if you uh, would introduce yourself, tell yeah. the uh, listeners who you are. I am Miguel Paniagua. I am producer at Tequila Works. I'm a proud producer of Rhyme, uh, the game that we are going to release very soon actually it's going to be on May 26 so it's been a very long road but very very well for it. now it's uh, it is it's where, where are we end of March so we're literally a couple of months away from release, release. Uh, it's been getting a lot of talk about it it's uh, it's on Xbox one here um, I believe it's PS4 as well and Nintendo Switch. I am to be also on PC Steam uh, for the same day, 26, and then there's an upcoming version for Switch. Uh, there's going to be a little delay, probably for summer. So, yeah, it's going to be. It's very. It was a natural step to go to Nintendo Switch because the game looks like very Nintendo-ish. Yeah. So, yeah. Very, very Nintendo. So. For the uh, for the uninitiated, rhyme. Uh, I I mean I could describe it from what I've seen. Phil, you could probably. But who best than uh, the producer himself? So uh, for anyone who is listening who doesn't know what rhyme is, sum it up. Give us the uh, the lowdown on the title. Rhyme is the story of the kid. Uh, that appears in a in a very mystery island with a beautiful universe color, and you have to explore. It's a, it's a kind of adventure of exploring uh, the all the, the the little environment, all the little island trees. Wherever you want to go, you will be able to go. Uh, and all around, there's a very deep story. Uh, there's a very beautiful narrative behind the, the kid and a lot of puzzles there too that will challenge your mind. Now, uh, you've got this, the story of the, uh, the kid wakes up, mm -hmm. is it, at the beginning? I can see there's, as we were playing, we, were, we could feel there was a, uh, there was an I, kind of an Ico, Shadow of the Colossus, um, you can the game sort of feel like not sort of like journey sort of feel to it as well, mixed with yeah. that in there. I felt quite a bit from that coming into it as well. There's, it seems to wear its inspiration on its sleeve. Is are there um, in terms of the de development team? Are the big fans of the uh, that kind of genre, and they've kind of channeled it into into rhyme? Yeah, actually, we are very very fan fan of uh, of Ico team. But this game is, has something unique uh, regarding those, those games. We don't have any combat. So the game is, has no word, has no combat. All the emotion, all the, the story is told to the player around the, the emotion of this kid. So even though we have this common aspect with Aiko and Zelda, the Wind Waker, um, they are more visual than actual ins gameplay inspiration. Uh, this this game is more narrative. I mean, Ico and Zelda are always very narrative, but this game has very deep story behind that it's quite subtle. Uh, you will need to explore a lot. You will need to uh, reveal a lot of secrets to understand what it's fu to fully understand what is going behind the game. The background it's quite deep so we just yeah, of course, oh. we are very fan of icon and yes and of course, somebody told me before you must be sick of people telling you that it's kind of Ico or kind of Zelda Wind Waker and I said uh, actually no this is quite flattering those are so huge games yeah. and being compared to just an honor because even though, I mean through playing you can you can feel the uh, the influences in that, but it has its own look to it. So you can't you, playing the game itself. You'd be like, oh well, this looks like 
such and such and it f plays like such and such but it, it isn't ha it does have its own unique look we've just see someone just playing now and you, you wake up on the beach um, and it's this beautiful uh, almost artistic um, kind of the visuals that it has about it is um, did the did the game itself start out with this particular visual look to it, is that was that the goal from the yeah, beginning? It was very intended. I mean, we had uh, at the beginning uh, one of the inspiration, uh, one of the the concept guys behind the game was Jose Luis Baello, who was our, our director. He was very, uh, he had a vision of doing a game with I don't know if you know a painter, a Spanish painter called Sorolla. He is from the beginning of the, the 20th century, uh, so he has he works the, the Mediterranean lights in a way that we try to to to, to 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 put it in the game actually. So it's very unique the way we try to 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 to, to work the lights of the Mediterranean island. Yeah. Actually, the sound has been also recorded in Ireland in, in, okay. very, in a very, very uncommon places where there is almost no civilization. And they were going to, there's a couple of guys, David Garcia, he went there to record those sil sounds to have very unique environment uh, sounds. Okay. Give you an atmosphere very real. It's giving it like a massively stunning atmosphere when you're playing the game and you can hear it and the sound effects coming through. It's just fantastic. That's why I got that sort of that Abzu and uh, Journey feel from it as well. Yeah, I think totally the, the music helps a lot to, to give you the mood of the game. Also. Yeah. So it's it's all about the uh, all about the atmosphere. Um, now I didn't play the demo. I just stood and watched it's and. It's not the demo. It's the full version. You were, yeah, you were uh, cut off as you From were, as you were approaching. Yeah, you were approaching the light, and you were uh, told to stop. Um, How much time do you manage? Did you? I mean, how um, you took to? Um, when you um, probably about forty minutes. I think it was been fast. Is that fast? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the usual player takes like one hour, a little more, to play the the first environment. So yeah, congratulations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so. Uh, from what we've seen, Phil was, uh, you were activating light puzzles to open doors. Yeah. There was a little fox that was, fella that was running around. Yeah, he's your companion. Uh, he's your companion. Yeah, the, okay. first, the first puzzle uh, tries to reveal how you summon this fox. And this fox is going to help you all around the, the adventure, all around your path. Uh, he's going this kind of guy, whenever you are lost, the fox appears and say, hey, this is the way. You can go and explore freely by yourself, but the fox is like always a little help to say, hey, I'm here, this is the way. <laughs> nice. Now, um, there was, because you were activating the puzzles with like a shout yeah. kind of a, or a, a cry kind of a thing. Um, is that one, just one of many uh, different uh, mechanics that you open up as you play through the uh, game? What can we expect from Beyond the Light that we were... Well, uh, the, the, the shouting mechanic is all around the game. Uh, it will, it will uh, be the base of many, many puzzles. There's a puzzle with perspective, there's a puzzle with sound, there are puzzles with light and shadow. Yeah, you, there was another one where um, Phil was turning a ball and it was changing the time of day. With the day and light yeah. cycle, yeah, that's one of my favorite puzzles. Yeah, it's very cool. I think, I think the, the, the night and day cycle we have is gorgeous. It looks very, very fine and it's so beautiful. The stars in the sky, it's, it's, it's amazing. But uh, yeah, we will have uh, this kind of puzzle all around the, the game. Uh, I can't tell you a little further, but what you will what you will find. But I hope you play and you will enjoy it. Well, it certainly looks. I mean, Phil, you're a big fan of Shadow of the Colossus and the previous. I don't want to keep referencing those titles because Rhyme is very much its own um, its own title itself. Gorgeous looking, and it looks like. I mean, I haven't played it, but we've 
uh, we're here all weekend, so I'm definitely going to throw myself in and see if I can make sure people are distracted and I can get past the bit when, uh, when we're not allowed to. Um, bring us an exclusive. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, is there anything else that you'd like to say about Rhyme? Is there anything that... that we are very excited of bringing this game. Uh, it's going to be released on 26 May on PS4, Xbox One and Steam. So yeah, it's, we are done. I mean, we are almost there. The release is coming. Very excited. And so is it, are you... Uh, it's been four years working on four, this game, so it's been a very long run. And it's, uh, it's, it's there, you're, you've we got are, the final copy yeah, down yeah. and you're... Yes. There's, no, there's no one sat back and they're like, well, we could, we kind of, there's this little thing. You know, and when you have a team that is so demanding with themselves and they are very enthusiastic, they are always a guy or two or the whole team that says, yeah, it's huge, it's incredible, it's well done, but we could have done this fix or this thing, or, but the game is fully uh, complete, uh, it's 100% done, it's fixed, it's pretty solid and I think it's the best thing that we could have achieved in the time we've been done. So, uh, was there a big team working on it? What's the, what was the uh, size? We started being 25, but we've been up to 45 uh, at the studio in Madrid. Uh, some outsourcing also with the animation unit, some support the VFX too, but yeah, 45 we've been working on. Awesome. It's been a great, great team to be an indie game, so yeah. Well, oh, sorry, oh, um, no, no. How, how big is the, the, the world itself? Well, how big? Um, if you want to finish the game from the beginning to the end, just like a speed run thing without taking the achievement, without taking the secret, it's going to take you like uh, six, eight hours, depends on the puzzle, so whatever. Is that whenever... the extra 20 minutes that I cut off on the first part? <laughs> no, 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 it's going to take you a little more. But if you, wanna, if you want to take all the achievements, all the secrets, the game can be up to 16, 80 hours. So 16, 18 hours, maybe, yeah. It's nice. It's nice. It's good though. I think that's on your wish list now, it isn't is, it? Yeah. <laughs> Although you, you I were really the, uh, yeah, Phil, you were the driving force in um, to see getting, so, getting to chat to uh, someone to, uh, at one point this weekend. So um, I'm, I, for one, I'm glad that you uh, introduced me to it because I think that's, uh, yeah, sold you. Yeah, I, I think you. I am sold. But. Um, Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for joining thank us. You. Thank you. Um, and we wish you uh, all the best for the rest of the weekend. Thank you very much. We wish you all the best too. Thank you. Thank you. God, I look different back then. Did you? I don't know. A little less greyer. A little less wiser. <laughs> yes, that's... Uh... Yeah, excellent stuff talking to Miguel from Tequila Works there. Looking forward to seeing uh, the actual retail uh, version of... Version? It's a... 26th of may i believe isn't it i think so we're hopefully going to be getting our hands on a review copy if they're uh, kind enough to deem us worthy hopefully they find us worthy considering that like he he was shocked that i managed to get through the game so quickly it's because you got skills phil i got skills to pay no i don't think i pay the bills that often <laughs> got skills to pay some bills some bills <laughs> not all of them just a few Skills to go halves on the bills. Just about. I think. <laughs> Just about. <laughs> it's a bit of a knife edge at times. Yes. So the next uh, interview was uh, for one of the games that was voted as most popular at this year's Rest. To be honest, I took umbrage with the games that came top of that list yeah. because Ukulele was one of them and Persona 5. See, that's yeah um i don't see they why they should be on it i know they were there but the whole point of ejx res is to be more of an indie scene than anything else yeah um, exactly there. Like, you could say that ukulele is indie but then if you look at the actual studio itself it's definitely not indie when you look at the, the people that developed it and the fact most of them probably worked on banjo kazooie and all that well yeah but it is I mean, they ukulele can be on the list, yes, but yeah. it's had 
I just I I don't I feel it should have been exempt perhaps quite I don't I don't know it just I think I mean I might have been still a little bit bitter because the fact that they sent out review copies of ukulele before all of the backers were sent their copies and it's like well hang yeah, on I know you didn't like that no I mean the backers were the ones that funded the game for Christ's the sake game. and then they went and gave it out to everyone else yeah it wasn't like, as if they hadn't made like however much money they made from the Kickstarter, like well, two and a half, three million. Ridiculous. Yeah, that was it. They made so much money. They, they, they didn't probably, technically, they didn't really need to send out review copies. No, their review copies would have just gone to the people that were going to buy it. Well, that have pre-ordered it, and then those people would have just obviously spoke about how good the game was. Well, yeah, or at least when at the same time as when or after the backers that just that just stuck in my uh stuck in your palette and it just it hasn't cleared yet has it no i'm it's still like, it's like when you have some really bad meat or you have some like really bad like tasting food and it just doesn't go yeah it's, it's just lingering yeah <laughs> it has left a bad taste in my mouth but that being said i quite like but um i almost said banjo kazooie ukulele banjo kazooie if you like no well it's yeah it plays it's good but it is basically banjo kazooie yeah glitches and all oh is it still glitchy as yeah the camera is an ass not what you want no but anyway we didn't come here to talk about ukulele not they've yet. got they got more than enough coverage so yeah the game that we are talking about next is phantom halls phantom halls uh now we both played bit of this didn't we and both played loved it yeah it was uh it was a lot of fun i didn't do quite as well as you because but they said you did quite well yeah but i didn't you started I, off i didn't keep i kept opening the chests and such and i didn't get any weapons all i had was melee stuff and they were like so oh that's realize... that's very strange because you often you actually get more you should be getting a pistol or something and yeah that made it harder for me personally yeah yeah, but, yeah they, they did say that usually by now you would have had a weapon but then i think both of us went through like the whole of the first level without any bad guys oh yeah of course yeah, level, yeah but like the first area without a single bad guy and we, they were like well this is weird considering that other people of the day have had like so many people like <laughs> kicking around here yeah and you guys have just started playing it and you we haven't seen anything yet i would have uh the one thing that i didn't the one thing that i wasn't happy with in the demo is the fact that i didn't get to play as ash from evil dead good old ash but um he is in the uh version that is available because it's the anniversary of uh, evil dead 2 so yeah. he is in the one that is kicking around on steam at the moment yes but, but uh that's no that's highly enjoyable demo sorry talked over you then no, what were you that's right no i that's what you want having, having a bit of ash versus evil dead in there yeah the way they the way they said they put him in i don't think either one of us got to play as him but no the way they put him in was really really good apparently mm. well from what they say anyway <laughs> well i think I we should go across and uh have a listen to what they say yep and have a listen to what we had to say yeah we were talking to lexi from incendium i was gonna say the midnight runners but what oh that's dexy not lexi oh <laughs> I didn't. I didn't get that, Phil. Sorry. No, because it's it's Dexy, not Lexi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm with you now. So yeah, uh, we should hand over to uh, the folks in the comfy seats in the uh, press office in the press, press area, lounge. press lounge with uh, one of the few presses places. Yeah, with the uh, donuts and champagne that they were handing out. Oh, obviously. And the uh, lap dances they were offering. Yeah, they offered those out to everyone and we didn't even have to give them any money for it no it was so no. nice we were just Normally, sipping on no, our crystal <laughs> okay well welcome back uh, folks we are back down on the uh on the show floor we're actually sitting down on the center here this time it's nice i've been on our feet all day uh phil and stefan back again um still no shirt and beard out he's uh yet to with a new diction that we've got for the other guy in our team who isn't with us um i'm sure he'll find it hilarious when he eventually uh is it yeah if you have a listen to it um, but yes we have a, another interview um it is for the game phantom halls yes sorry i was going to say spiritual 
Yeah. But it's not, it's not that at all. It's Phantom <laughs> Horse. And, uh, sir, who are you? Yeah, hi, I'm uh, Alexi Leon, and I'm the uh, studio head of Incendium Games, the creators of Phantom Horse. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Um, you've just talked us through, uh, talked us both through the, uh, the demo of Phantom Horse, uh, which we've both enjoyed. Um, if for anyone who, for the uninitiated who are listening at the moment, um, care to tell us what Phantom Horse is uh, all about? Yeah, I mean, it was sort of originally conceived as Worms meets Resident Evil, if you could combine those two things. Um, so it was, you know, I definitely wanted the comedy element and the fun and the squad, you know, be able to have, you know, a squad of four characters and a huge flame and all of that and a big loadout of wacky weapons. Um, but I wanted it all to be in the haunted house, have a creepy atmosphere, and it to be in real time. So we ended up going procedurally generated, and so our sort of tagline now is it's like, it's Worms meets Belonky, uh, which is also kind of a similar uh, you know, vibe in there. Uh, and so that's really what Phantom Wolves is. It's a, it's a squad based, procedurally generated haunted house game. Uh, it's got some quirky mechanics uh, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, and there's uh, a load of uh, banter in there, and it very much is a kind of horror comedy title in the vein of kind of 80s uh, classic horror B movie stuff like uh, Evil Dead which is obviously one of our favourite movies and why is a sort of uh, a thank you for all the early adopters on, on early access where the game is currently available uh, we've started putting uh, Evil Dead 2 licensed content and Ash as a playable character in there uh, from day one so is uh, there a story to Phantom Halls what's the uh, what's the background of the yeah so I mean there's certainly a better game to Phantom Halls and you know the, you know, the group of teams and the mansion and the stores and, and so on um, right Right now, do a group of teams yeah. need a reason to be in it? Well, I think you know that's the thing that's fun about each of these characters when you get the game, and, and even now on early access, there's already a handful of characters that you can choose from. At the beginning, you have about a dozen, and we're adding more every couple of weeks. Each character has their own kind of personality and their own uh, objectives within the mansion, they come through very clearly from their dialogue and, and their mission objectives. And so, you know, the reason or what's the story is like, well, each character has their own story, but what's fun is we have about requests written and so that you know there could be up to a dozen for each character eventually by the time we get to retail and there could be up to 20 characters um, some of them you'll have a launch even on the retail build will be launched with four playable characters and by playing through their stories they will rescue other characters or come across other characters um, and that will further the overall story and unlock new stories and new quests excuse me I don't want to turn this off oh that was yours that was me my bad I I it sounded as if it was. Uh, it was them. It was somebody else. It was actually yeah. somebody else. We'll edit that. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Um, so yeah, we we've got two, four, six characters available at the moment. And you say you're looking to get up to hundred. Well, hundred quests. Hundred quests split across probably anywhere between a dozen and twenty characters. Whether they'll all be playable or whether some will be licensed, like Ash, and some will be original. Um, you know that we're not entirely clear on the breakdown yet. But we know we have a dozen playable characters that we've actually made that we're slowly integrating into the game. Uh, I think the next one to come will be the writer and she's kind of a uh, parody of like you know an Angela Lansbury mode she's, oh, yeah, yeah. Type, which is kind of fun um, you know and then they'll go on from there and there's a whole kind of quite diverse wacky cast that we're bringing in and as I say they all have their reasons for venturing into the mansion and some of them already know each other and end up interacting in that way which is kind of fun uh, depending on which characters you actually have and which you find within the mansion um, they kind of rib each other and have banter with each other so you know the, the goth is always kind of very sarcastic and dismissive of the cheerleader and things like that as well Ah, okay, so how does uh, you, you say the uh, Ash Dead 2 Ash is licensed? How does something like that come about? Uh, more luck than anything else. I mean, it was the 13th anniversary of People Dead. I met one of the uh, licensing agents at a big you know, IP expo, and they sort of said, Oh, everything they're doing, and they're just looking to really reinvigorate the movie and get it out. And I was like, Well, I'm launching this horror game, and it comes out at, at, at around that time. We could launch it on the day of the anniversary of the film of the Ash in the game, and they were like, That sounds great. So, That's why not? amazing. <laughs> um, Phil, not so much, but and the uh, other member of our team, but, uh, both him and I, massive Evil Dead fans. Um, so yeah, uh, when I saw that listed on the um, 
the emails to say there was a uh, Phantom of Horses was going to be here and there's the uh, Ash DRC or the Ash content that you yeah, it's the beginning. To... It's the beginnings of what will be for retail. A piece we have to, once we start monetizing that and it's fully finished for licensing reasons and boring, you know, stuff, we have to charge people. I'm sorry, because we have to pay a royalty to the guys, you know. But as of now, they're being very gracious and so whilst it's still in development, all of our yeah, early are getting the benefit of that content as it goes out and then eventually obviously anyone that is in early access they will keep all that content but once it goes to retail we have to break it out you know so that's kind of where it's at so right now as of you know two weeks post launch there is Ash as a playable character with one quest we're, we're probably looking at in the next sort of I would say two three months rolling out a full like half a dozen quests for him there's going to be dead eye it's an economical on the tape deck all that stuff's being built it's all going in some really fun themed uh, quests so right now it's just kind of Ash and his uh, evil twin uh, mission to, to find him track him down and take him out <laughs> but there's there's going to be a lot more fantastic you say um it's kind of uh, you started out kind of worms uh meets resident evil uh it then became this worms meets spelunky kind of a deal are those the are those the big titles that really inspired uh, Phantom Halls or are yeah, there I mean, other series, that, other genres that you were? Yeah, I mean, there's a load, a load of stuff. Obviously, any game developer is going to pull from. I mean, I think one, like tonally speaking, if you're looking at it as the game, if you ever look at the key art of Phantom Halls, I think the first thing that springs to mind for me is Maniac Mansion, which is probably the, the, the cleanest kind of visual inspiration for this. And obviously, it was a completely different era. And different, but if you just look at like the box art of Maniac Mansion with the house on the hill. The blue blown eyes. I mean, it's very much a kind of throwback and a nod and a tribute to that in our overall aesthetic. But obviously, we've gone with a you know a low poly 3D aesthetic and then some really nice uh, you know light bloom and visual effects and you know things like that within what we can do with the Unity engine to really kind of dress it up and give it a bit of atmosphere. But obviously, they couldn't do back in the day with, with Maniac Mansion. So it's almost like a, how I would have loved the Maniac Mansion remaster to like look. <laughs> this is how Phantom Halls looks. Yeah. But obviously, in terms of gameplay, it's quite different. Certainly, you still explore them. And, find items. and we've gone for the witty banter so there's certainly that that element of the dialogue coming through but again it's presented in a different way and I, I really felt strongly that if we were going to have banter between characters and characters saying stuff it's a pet hate of mine uh, is is poorly displayed text in games and this you see even in mega budget games where it's like text is just like Helvetica along the bottom of the screen <laughs> yeah. and I'm like this is this is terrible you know and so I really wanted them to have this kind of cartoony comic book feel and it to feel quite engaging of like when something happens a dialogue all pops up and it, it themes the character and the text read out and that way it feels a bit more immediate and a bit more it's coming from them from the character and so you, you know you start to feel a bit more like they have a personality rather than just like all the text yeah. um, so again these are things that you know people love about Maniac Mansion and the text and all that stuff. but for me it's like yeah the, the writing was amazing but if I was going to do it myself I would change the presentation so there's things like that where certainly games have inspired us and there's things we love we've taken from them we've been, you know uh, riffing off but we're doing our own thing with it yeah. so you're uh, you're saying it's a being a team effort, a lot of ideas coming together. How big is the uh, the team that's putting Phantom Hall? Yeah, together? I mean, at any one time, it kind of I mean, it fluctuates a bit. There's kind of like, I would say there's like four like four guys uh, plus Coach Jun, who's Coach on who did the the soundtrack as well. So I would you know got an honourable mention. He's done a killer job. All the original orchestral score there. He did the soundtrack to uh, Bold Art of Viking and things like that. So uh, and he's going to be contributing more uh, as we go along. Um, there's about three original sort of pieces of music in there now. We're already working on another one for the. Chain sequence where you escape the mansion and there'll be more down the line um, so yeah there's kind of like a core group of, you know a handful and then uh, you know we have freelancers contributing if we need to up the ante on you know texture stuff or, you know modeling or, you know but kind of a uh, the more like art asset stuff, you know, yeah. we, we have uh, people helping out with that. Um, but yeah, in terms of, I mean, you know, the, the core programming on this game has been handled by like two people. Uh, and then in terms of design, it's split between myself, the lead artist, the lead programmer. Um, you know, and I kind of have the overall holistic view of the game. It's sort of my, I, I, you know, it was the inception of the idea was mine and to put it together in inspiration to this core game design dot. And then, you know, I'm really fortunate to have a fantastic team with a lot of experience between them, you know, helping to put it together. So, your um, you were the primary driving force behind yeah. bringing Phantom Halls together. What was your uh, background before that? Did you? Yeah, so I mean, I, I work a bit in games. My company, um, Incendium, which obviously for the purposes of Phantom Halls, you know, is like the developer slash publisher. But actually, Incendium has been around for like ten years, uh, and I do all kinds of media, creative, and interactive work, uh, mostly client-based. Um, we actually have. Uh, 
uh, some in-house IP of our own. We have a, a comic book series called The Tunnel Descent, which we previously, uh, you know, published two graphic novels through IEW, and then we, we actually made a mobile game of that. So technically, that was our first foray into developing games. Was a, a, a Unity developed uh, sort of running brawler mobile just to bring that to life on a different platform. You know, that IP that IP still exists. We, more comics coming out at the time. We're actually working on through Incendium now, the sort of team we have now, as well as Phantom Wars, we are working on a new return the same game for Steam, which is a kind of insane guitar hero arcade shooter thing. Wow. It's totally bad. Um, I won't get into it too much to detract from, from this, but Gosh. that's very early. But, you know, so we have a few things on the go. And yeah, so uh, my day job is kind of uh, actually helping Iron Maiden with a lot of their uh, creative and digital. I do their music videos, tour intro videos. Uh, I'm one of the lead producers on their mobile uh, RPG game, Legacy of the Beast, and things like that. So you know, we do commercial work for Incendium uh, with, with media clients and brand clients, as well as now, you know, our own thing and being a bit more grassroots and being like, okay, well, you know, it's nice that the company's up and running and has some great clients and we do some cool work, but we'd love to make some of our own yeah, yeah. ideas come to life. It's always, always nice to have a finger in... Uh yeah, a lot of different parts. A lot of different parts. <laughs> that's, that's what, that's yeah, what yeah. I was looking for. Be careful what you say after. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Too long of a pause there. And it's uh, yeah, dangerous ground. Yeah. Um, so you say that uh, Phantom Pulse has been in early access and it's due to. Yeah. So it's it's been in early access uh, since the 13th of this month. Okay. Which was also the th uh, 30th anniversary of Evil Dead 2. Um, so launch on Sunday. And uh, yeah, it's obviously early days from that point. Of you, I mean, we didn't want to launch on early access as a game of like, oh, here's what we're working on, sort of thing. It was like, here is a holistic view of the core game loop, it's playable, it's polished, there aren't any bugs that we're aware of, you know, it should be good fun. And we want to bring people in and get that feedback and get that community building around it so that we get, you know, clear direction from players. It's like, this is what we really want to see, this is cool, but this is where you need to go. You know? And we're already getting, you know, that feedback is fantastic, you know, to see some of the community like, to have someone go out and buy this game for five bucks and play it for six hours and then come and give like a missive of like three pages of text and we love it it's, it's, it's superb so and we're already acting on that we're making some, some changes to uh, some of the control and input uh, capabilities some little niggly things about you know at a reload functionality about item drop when your item is broken or items shattering when they're broken doing a bit of extra damage and then you know disappearing from your inventory things like that that come from player feedback you know obviously when we're um, you know developing a game like this and you know, we're almost thinking quite high level about like level design. Of, oh, we want to add some more height to the levels. Maybe we'll be climbing on the back wall. Maybe we'll be adding real time ladders and elevators. Maybe there'll be scenarios on the elevators where actually you're going up the elevator and the elevator is a room, a platform, and zombies are attacking you on the elevator. And, you know, we're thinking about things like this. Um, and sometimes you forget the little things like why why can't I go back in the menu by pressing B? You know, and you're like, oh yeah, we really should get on that. You know, so so it's that's uh, you know you're kind of your own worst enemy when it comes to to play testing a game. You know, because you know the features that you've put in, you want them to be fun, you want them to be engaging, and you test them and you know they work, and you move on. And you've got like the next big feature that you want to build. And so sometimes when it's a small team, little things that really do add to the overall experience, you know, slip through the cracks. And it's, it's been great to have a community, you know, get back to us on that and be like, yeah, we're having fun, why can't I do this? And I'm like, you know what, that's a really good question. So, so give me two weeks <laughs> and you will be able to do that. So how far from complete do you think Phantom Wars is? Yeah, um, I mean, complete relative is the, like the amount of content we have planned kind of versus you know when we would actually want to drop the release. Uh, you know, if we wanted to, we could release this Halloween, but actually in terms of our timeline, we were actually thinking about a full retail release with a hell of a lot more content, possibly even multi-platform yeah. um, for Halloween 2018. So this is a game that could be in early access for more like 18 months, um, but it is a steady stream of content. And, you know, it, it is, uh, as with all game design, an iterative process. We also, fortunately, have some people interested in the game in the format it's in now. So, you know, that may change our, our rollout date if we work with a partner or a or whatever. But as it is now, absolutely, there'll be a full retail for, for Halloween next year. We're really excited about it. We'll still do something cool for Halloween this year, no doubt. Probably a big content drop around that time. Uh, it may even be local call. Uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, you so heard it here first. Yeah, so there's, there's, no, there's no definitive, like, this is when, other than that, Halloween 18, that's the latest possible date we'll release yeah. the full retail. Um, but, you know, it might be sooner. Well, it's um, the good thing about these days, there's no real. Because maybe back in the day, you would have had some stigma with games being in early access and you, you wouldn't have got anything 
for your money, no feedback, no um, interaction with the developer. Um, whereas you've got uh, gang beasts just over the way. They've been in early access for two, three years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think it's they're a couple of months away from actually version 1.0. Oh, yeah, exactly. And what the good thing about that is, and the great thing about what Phantom Halls is doing, and yourselves and Phantom Halls, is you're taking the advice and um, the input. feedback and the input from yeah. everyone who is playing it at the moment, and as well as being able to factor in your ideas, which, yes, you, you, you could have a thousand and one ideas, but a thousand of them could be terrible ideas. <laughs> True. But unless, until you actually feed it out into the public. Yeah. Um, and so that's, I mean, that's the great thing about early access. It, no, um, I love it. I think it's, it's one of those opportunities. You know, for me, I think if early access is used correctly, it's about giving people something fun and saying, you know, what do you think the potential is here? You know, because they're playing it and like, you know, this is cool. It would be even cooler if I could do this. Yeah. Or this will be off the charts once you have local co-op yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, that's where we're going to put our focus because overwhelmingly, you know, there's this, this big desire with Phantom Halls for local co-op. It's always been on our roadmap for release to have multiplayer functionality. But right now, everyone's just like, please, just, just do it. <laughs> it would be awesome. And we're like, okay, well, there's a few things we have to iron out about the level design, things like that, about how that would work in multiplayer. And, you know, are there restrictions? Can you have two people cooperating both with teams of four? Or is it two and two? Or is it three each? with three characters, things like this that need to be figured out and balanced. Um, but, you know, we're going to bring that up on our on our schedule and make sure that happens this year because, you know, people are really gunning for it. They really want to see that happen. Um, and we didn't think that there would be such an overwhelming desire. They're like, I love this, and I would be playing it all the time with my mates if there was this. And it's like, okay, we'll make that happen. It's, um, it's also, you've got the word of mouth oh, as yeah. well. So somebody's playing something um, and uh, and they're enjoying it. They're going to tell other people, and, and then that can just that can help. One hopes, and I think Steam's a really powerful platform for that. And I was just talking with my uh, you know with, with the team today with, with the lead artist about you know what we should really do some trading cards. We should really start doing the achievement icons and all that stuff. I mean I know it's early days. And we've got like you know. 20 quests in the game or something like that. I think we will certainly have 20 by uh, the, the, the 0.03 update, <laughs> which comes this Sunday. Um, you know, and it's like, yeah, but nonetheless, completing 20 quests, achievement. You know, killing X number of bugs, achievement. You know, and it's it's kind of a fun thing. We're not we're not necessarily uh, expecting people to have like a checklist and go out and hunt, but I think it's fun when people see in the community like, oh, you know, this guy's got he's been playing this game, he's got these achievements, he's done all this stuff. And you're kind of if you have that game as well, that's where the, the community starts to knit together. Because the guy's like, oh, I didn't know there was an achievement for doing that yeah, go, you know. yeah. and so we definitely want to get all that stuff in there to really just you know give back to the Steam community and just be like thanks for playing our game so early on and you know, getting involved yeah. good stuff okay so the final final 30 seconds yeah. pitch in phantom halls yeah. go yeah, I think even you, though well you've just had 18 minutes and <laughs> yeah, done yeah. a bang up job but uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you're still on the fence, I think it comes down to this. If you like 80s horror, if you like horror comedy, if you like B-movies, and if you like cool, quirky indie games with unique mechanics, I think you'll really enjoy Phantom Wolf. I hope you check it out. And I, more than anything, I hope you check it out and give us some feedback. Because we are acting on it. We awesome. really appreciate it. You heard it, folks. Yes. Anything to add, Phil, <laughs> no. apart from that? No, no, Phil, no. tremendous contribution. Oh, as, ever. <laughs> as always. He's the strong silent guy. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you very much for coming down. So there we go. The next on the list. Um, brawl out. Brawl out. Yes, it's super. It's Super Smash Brothers with animals. Super Animal Brothers. Yeah, and they each have Basically. have a different martial art and such that they can do. Is it? Oh yeah. Yes, it was. It was really really good. I enjoyed myself. Was that the only? Did I? Oh no, I didn't win that one. No. Well, on the first one, I won that. On the second and third, actually, no, you did win one. You won the third one. Did I? Yeah. I remember you won the third one. I only remember winning Demambo. I didn't remember winning uh, anything else. <laughs> uh no, you came second, but you beat me on the third one, I think. Ah. I think. I'm trying to remember because it was 4 weeks ago. <laughs> It was. But uh, Brawl Out was very good. Enjoyed our time with that. It was basically Smash Brothers with animals. Basically, without power-ups as well. So there's no Pokeballs. Don't know I... why. They should have put those back in there. <laughs> yeah, there's a lawsuit if there's... Um... 
Nintendo will be right on that. But, really? Um, Nintendo aren't on anything like that. <laughs> they might have had... Because it wasn't the full version, so they might have power-ups and stuff in the uh, full version of the game. They might do. I wonder if we actually mention it in the interview. I can't quite remember now. I think they said they didn't They didn't want to put that in there, but I'm not too sure. Uh-huh. But, um... Four weeks, things change. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So we'll pass over now, I think, to uh, ourselves and Bogdan. Stefan yeah. on the floor. And in Bogdan London. from uh, Angry Mob Games. Talking about brawl out. Welcome back. Hi guys. Hi guys. Thanks. Hi guys. Hi guys. <laughs> um, yes, the third voice you hear. We have another guest. Um, yeah. Sir, if you'd like to introduce yeah, yourself. I'm Bogdan from Angry Mob Games and a developer of brawl out. So, for anyone who hasn't seen brawl out, if you've been or knows what it is, if you've been living under a rock. Um, Care to elaborate? What is brawl out? It's a get out from uh, under the rock and you start playing. So it's kind of um, brawl out is the um, competitive fighting game. It's coming on the twenty first of April on Steam. So it's like a platform fighter with um, like some uh, unique ideas and some um, uh, fighting moves inspired from traditional fighters like Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat and then uh, the, um, some gameplay mechanics from Smash Bros. So uh, it's like a mix of violent fighters and those fun platformers. It's, uh... It wears its inspiration on its sleeve. The you, you can't help but look at it and think, "Hang on a minute, that's Smash Brothers." But when you play it, it has its own feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we wanted to make the game feel like you're actually punching and kicking the others. So you actually feel like you're in a fighting game as opposed to maybe doing some sort of magic effects instead of like actually kicking people in the head. Close combat sort of fight and everything else, yeah. So, the, uh, each of the characters, rather than being any kind of human, generic sort of knight, you've got a magician, they're animals. Yeah. But they're not kind of, they've got, you've got like a kind of kung fu toad. And yeah, it's like a, a luchador. It's like a wrestler. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, a luchador, yeah, yeah. So, uh, we have like, in the game we have this uh, competitive multiplayer aspect and, and we have the single player campaign. And in a single player you can't really do a story if they don't have anything in common. So that their common theme is that they are uh, all like um, from a different civilization and they represent uh, different parts of the world. And that's a lot of our inspiration for them. And they each have their own fighting style. So you have the Munchador, as you said, and you have the um, Olaf Tyson, who is like a Viking boxer. And Sephira is like an Egyptian kick ass, like a. Uh, maybe see it similar to Chun Li or something like, or like Liu Kang. And uh, then you have uh, King Apu, um, who looks like a monkey king, but he's actually like inspired by the moves in Castlevania. Okay. Like he has a whip and doing all those uh, long range attacks. You know, that you have like a vault or new character, he's, uh, like a voodoo hedgehog. He's got some electricity attacks. A voodoo hedgehog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I think that was, uh, we were just playing just now, and I think that was one of the guys who, he kind of, almost a blanker kind of, yeah. coils up and just kept electrocuting me. So how many characters do you, uh, do we have in the, because the, that build, or that version that we played just now, had about five. Six. Uh, we're going to launch on our Steam on the 21st with six characters, and by summer you'll have nine characters. So in the summer we'll have the full story mode, and you'll see what uh, role everybody plays over there. So uh, we were playing on a fairly sort of flat, flat background. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how many different levels are we going to see? What kind of locations are there that we so can each have? character has their own stage, and we have like a pretty balanced or symmetric or simulated like a competitive stage, like a competitive version. And um, then we have for each stage like a dynamic version where you keep shifting around and all that. And what you see with um, ice level is just a single, a small part of it. 
So he's not gonna be like that in the finals. Yeah. So you know, yeah, go, go uh, keep going from um, one area to the other, and it keeps breaking or moving or shifting and all that. Uh, is there gonna be any power ups, or is it all gonna be just the fighting side of it and leaving off any of that sort of thing? Yeah, we try to leave out um, like any extras like that because um, it's not fair in a um, competitive way. And even if you just play for fun, if you keep using those items, it's harder to learn the competitive side. So uh, we think that many people will uh, keep playing and um, get good at it, so they can compete. You know, you're gonna do like a user-generated tournament online with uh, Xbox Arena and all that, and um, it's really fun. In, in other words, Phil, get good. That's what it is. I got first, right? No, but get better. Oh, no, shush, <laughs> you didn't. Um, are they going to be like teams as well? Is it going to be like two yeah. people versus two? Yeah. 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 Just press the button and you can do it now. <laughs> so the uh, the visual style, it's it's all got a very clean, very um, crisp and physical look to it. Each character looks as though it has a, a physicality. Um, was that the goal from the beginning, to create something that has that hyper-realism to it. Yeah, so we uh, took inspiration from uh, the Disney Infinity characters. They're a bit more detailed by that than that, but they're edgy in that way. Yeah, so it's like that. And uh, I'm guessing uh, full, uh, each character has his own voice, has his own sounds. Do they do they talk? Or I couldn't quite hear it from the demo. It's quite loud. In uh, well, we can uh, do like um, their voices and all their dialogues for the um, story mode. So that's gonna come in summer. And there's uh, there's obviously gonna be a, a, an eclectic soundtrack of each. Does each character have its own uh, theme tune? And it's uh, all from kind of centric where they're yeah. from. Yeah, you should check it out and maybe edit it on your podcast. It's really fun. <laughs> yeah, I guess I sent you the music. Awesome. So we were with some really talented uh, sound designers for the music. They worked on uh, some well-known games like Oxen Free and Awesome Mods and others. Okay. That, uh, so you say it's uh, 21st of April out on Steam, yeah. and then we're looking at the summer for a console's release. Uh, so... 30, sec 30, 60 seconds, I need you to boil down Brawl out into the pitch that is going to sell it to our... I mean, to be honest, I'm sold, I'm sold yeah. <laughs> because to have the local beat the hell out of... You. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I, I lost. But um, so pitching the 21st, the, the release for Steam, pitch the... Yeah. Pitch it, Phil. Pitch it. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> it's fantastic. One word, that's all we needed. Yeah. Well, fantastic. Thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> We're back. We're so there, back. Talking about Brawl out there. It's out now on Steam, but I think it's coming to consoles uh, in the summer. Probably already yes. said that in the interview, I think. <laughs> Probably. So yeah, the next interview we had was, um, we did get to sit down for this one, but didn't someone set up like camera equipment and stuff right in your way, Phil, or something? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I couldn't see because really I was I was kind of I was facing uh, Andrew, the guy who we were talking to, and then afterwards you were like, "Yeah, yeah they set up all this camera stuff." I I was not happy, buddy. Because I, I literally we were down there first. It was what area was it? It was the in? Unreal oh, area, wasn't it? It was Unreal, and <laughs> Unreal came over. And then they literally just started setting up the camera right where I was, right where I was sat. So like yeah. it left no space for anyone else, and it le literally left no space for anyone to get around anyway. So like I then had to move back so people could get around the back of them, but they were literally recording with so much space needing needed that I was just like, oh, I don't like this interview. It's not the fact that I didn't like the the game; I just didn't like the interview because they were being a pain. <laughs> 
Oh, that's not very nice. No. Because it was a good, good interview. I enjoyed chatting, chatting I to you. I didn't get to uh, hear Andrew. it, so, well, so I'll probably hear it soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'll have to have a listen. Um, we're actually talking about Formula Fusion, which is what, the, how would you describe it? I don't want to, I don't want to say Wipeout, but that's as kind best. Kind of said it now. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but. <laughs> you kind of said it. It's F-Zero. Uh, F-Zero kind of racing, futuristic racing in the style of Wipeout and F-Zero and all of those things and All what's that things. what's that one on fast fast racing neo oh, fast racing neo yeah in that kind of a style but oh my god that game looks good visually and that is a good looking game it, to be honest it was a really good game like i enjoyed it i think you enjoyed it mm. did you guys get to play it i did but not on the day of the interview i went back um and played it when i was on my lonesome on the uh saturday and you enjoyed it i did enjoy it it was hard but it was um, definitely, definitely hard. those uh those kind of games always take a bit of um getting More used to, to understand. yeah yeah it's not it's not easy a standard driving game you it, you never get a standard driving game from games that are like like that anyway things, no. things like f-zero and i was gonna say formula fusion it form <laughs> Games like F Zero and Formula Fusion aren't like <laughs> that in the first place. <laughs> no, but um, right. yeah, I think that's just come out now on Steam, or it's just about to come out of early access. Yeah, I think and... they've got it on a. They had it on early access at that point, um, but the, I think they only had one, one or two, one or two tracks. I think that's what I heard, but I can't remember. Yeah, I think it's it's very very soon that it's due for its big release. So yeah, um, I think we'll hand over to ourselves chatting to. Over Andrew what sorry over on, over on the show floor again yeah talking to Andrew from R8 games uh talking about Great formula game. fusion okay welcome back folks hi Phil cheers guys we are back with another interview uh this time for a futuristic racing game I'm probably not describing it very well but uh we have a gentleman here who can probably do a much better job sir what's your name and um, my name is Andrew Walker, I'm the creative director and founder of Ara Games. Thank you for joining us. Right. We are looking at Formula Fusion um, from a, a sat down position. Um, it's been a day and a half of uh, sheer hell. Sheer hell. It's, but it's, it's been good, you've uh, been getting a lot of attention. Yeah, I, I guess my feet are an indicator of the amount of attention. I need to sit down now, I can't walk, I've been crippled. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of people kind of coming in and playing the game, we've got a lot of really good reactions from it, and uh, we've, we've been in the background of a Reuters interview, and now it's okay. been, been, been into an interesting time at EGX. So, Formula Fusion, for anyone that doesn't know, what is it? Um, well, some people have made comparisons to Wipeout, some people have made comparisons to F-Zero, there's, you know, there's many, you know, it is a futuristic anti-gravity racing game. Um, I guess, you know, with my background in having worked on Wipeout, you know, people are going to draw comparisons. It does have some comparisons to the more, the more popular kind of AG racing games out there. Um, I mean, it, was, it literally started out as a kind of a pet project, really, a bit of a vanity project. Kind of just put together a, a playable in, in Unreal and, and then uh, engaged with a friend of mine called Jen I. Oakman, who's, who's quite established concept artist in films. He worked on Guardians and Inception and stuff. So we were able to kind of throw about some ideas conceptually and visualize things and then. And then we took it on to Kickstarter and had a successful Kickstarter campaign. Grew it organically. You know, we went out onto early access. Um, again, grew the company, got some uh, investors in, and here we are today. The GX is looking to launch in Q2 and see what happens. So. The uh, build we're currently seeing, is this the, uh, what people can expect on uh, the current early access build? So, hands up on, you know, for early access, we, we did engage with uh, the community as much as we possibly could have done. Uh, you know, we, we didn't put as many updates out there as you know, we, we should have done possibly. So, so the, the last update was around Christmas time and uh, the, 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 the build that we've got on display at EGX. It's a million miles sort of on from oh, that. Okay. So we're going to surprise quite a few people. I think we're going to drop it on people shortly. Uh, 
Um, we, won't, we can't give an exact date. There's a couple of bugs that can throw us out a week either day, but who knows? Like overnight, it might get fixed and we might just drop it off people. <laughs> so, but, you know, what we've got at EGX is a kind of rough and ready next update to go out on early access, and then so we'll see. You'll see how it goes next day, and then get out there as soon as possible. So. Uh we're currently seeing we've got a uh, an orange craft on the uh, on the one monitor. We've got a black, kind of a uh, more sportier looking uh, craft on there. Uh, how many uh, craft are it there? Are you looking to get in total? What's the uh, what's so, the count? So there are ten teams. I mean, we've approached this as a Formula Formula One kind of in the future racing game. Um, so commercially that does open opportunities as far as branding and on billboards and you know the, the largest sort of companies out there that you can go for sponsorship and energy drink drinks to people if you want to come along and if you get your, game, if you're, your brand in the game then do so um, but yeah it is there are 10 teams uh, taking that kind of Formula 1 aspect uh, there are 5 craft at the moment there are 4 speed there's sorry, 5 speed classes um, yeah and, and, and it's been developed with Designers Republic so early on we engaged there's actually a partner of our games our game uh, Designers Republic, so Ian Anderson at, at Designers Republic, having sort of established the look and the feel of a wipeout in, in, in the early days, wanted to engage with us and see what we could do in a sort of a different direction with this game. You know, we really, really like the whole Formula One aspect, which is something we really trying to explore. But yeah, it's um, but also what I want to get across as well is the fact that uh, it is that this is the North American region. So what you're seeing there and what will go out at launch will be eight tracks from North America but it's actually we're developing the World Series of Underground Racing so there's actually ten regions so this this is the this is our promise to you guys that we're going to deliver you know all ten regions this is just the first region I mean, you know we're not going to be delivering loads of paid for DLC so we're just when you buy this you get all of the regions around the world so that's our ambition to keep going after long nice. keep delivering things um, yeah, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll keep rattling on because I mean, no, 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 the that's, usual kind that's, of pitch thing. That's more than. Uh, but uh, so we've got lots of tr um, lots of teams. Yep. Uh, and the uh, vehicles themselves. Do you, do you refer to them? Are they just called the? Uh, do they have a particular name? Or are yeah. they just the vehicles or? No, no, no. They. Um, so we've got. Uh, <laughs> you testing my knowledge now. Uh, Vixen, Python, Saber, Vauxhall, and uh, Dragon, I think. And then they've each got like their own kind of little personalities about them, so one might have a little bit more in the way of uh, resistance, like shield kind of thing, or one might be a little bit more, have a bit more agility. Or, okay. um, but in the garage, um, you can take all of these craft into the garage and just mess around with the kind of exposed physics system that we've put in there as well. So we've got um, the ride stiffness, the effectiveness of the uh, air brakes, drift, all of those things are exposed in the garage. So, so yeah, you get a base crack and then you can put your own personality on it. So, so there's plenty of customizable yeah. bits and pieces. And, and that leads into the... Um, so, that, so what we're really looking at is competitive multiplayer with tournaments. Uh, we've had interest um, speculative interest I guess so far from ESL or you know there, there is a potential for this to go down that route and obviously we want to grow it organically so once we start to see the community setting up their own tournaments and then you know we're getting the user account online then we can go back to people within that without those sorts of ecosystems and then explore like, you know, full on competitive like all the world parts. Um, I saw that there was a campaign mode on it. Is that um, do you find yourself like racing with AI to build up the team? Like so Voxel, like you're racing with another AI from Voxel to yeah. build up points in a sense. So the law of the game has been developed where you've got standout pilots in each region and those are the AI that you, you race against. So in the campaign mode, uh, you are you're racing against balanced AI, so some are better than others. Um, and then you're competing in, in a similar kind of basic way to Mario Kart in the fact that you've got different speed classes. But when you win these sort of tournaments you'll get access to other cards that you can attach to your craft or you know, sort of trophy items and things like that and then ultimately outside of all, competing all of the tournaments in all of the different modes 
then you'll get to be able to compete against the Beast, which is our kind of top gear equivalent of Stig, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> so the Beast will have like a nice and shiny black craft with all of the bits that you can never have, and you've got to try and beat him to kind of nick those bits. Yeah, that sort of stuff. So. Now, it's not just a case of being the fastest, taking the corners uh, perfectly. No. There are weapons in there. Yes. Uh, so what makes this game stand out, I think, from others, uh, we've got weapons. Yeah, and other games do have weapons, but we've got offensive and defensive weapons. You can load out your craft in the garage at the start, um, and you can drop um, the white phosphorus kind of in the track to blind, blind people. We've got smoke, mines, energy leech, you know, um, cloak. You know, it depends on how you want to play. You, you, you might sort of want to become the tank and sort of uh, have the kind of ram card installed where you can smash through people and things. Uh, so yeah, there, there are lots of different weapons. You can attach cards onto the weapons like ricochet. You can layer up the cards, so you can have multiple ricochets. You can have uh, armor piercing. You can split the weapons. You can uh, change the color. You know, and, and it, 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 the, the whole system in the garage is fully customizable. You know, we're probably going to draw the line at people racing you know, rubber ducks around the track. <laughs> but you will be able to buy vanity items and make yourself look like Night Rider, for instance. Nice. TM. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Copyright permitting. Well, yeah, copyright permitting, yeah. Um, so you say we're seeing the uh, North American build here. These uh, are tracks. Uh, set in a distant future, dystopian, a dystopian, world. dystopian world, dystopian version of our world. Uh, it is, yes. Um, which means it's quite interesting because in our version of the game, we've got a United States of Europe, uh -huh. of which the UK is a part of. <laughs> <laughs> well, it remains to be seen on that one. Um, but the, I mean. The you you're whizzing by the back uh, the uh, backgrounds and over the tracks at such a speed, and yet there's so much detail in the uh, in the in the courses and in the tracks. It's um it's almost a shame that you're going as fast. Uh, is there any plans to implement a uh, an, uh, an almost a um sort of a tour kind of a almost like a tour bus kind of a uh, mode where you can travel the tracks and be able to take in the scenery or well uh we've got so our partner or one of our partners is uh, nvidia so partner we're actually sort of working with them to improve their technology so we've got ansel in there in a minute which is a really nice kind of screenshot mechanism that allows you to take uh, footage of really high res screenshots and 360 shots and stuff from the game. We've got our own replay system in there, so we've got a spectator cam system in there where you can choose to sort of on a Formula One level kind of see the um, kind of race unfolds as you kind of and record that and it online. So there's lots of uh, you know, if you want to take out nice tasty visuals you can do there's different camera modes you can play there's an in cockpit mode at the minute but it's um, a little bit uh rough and ready at the moment but it's still it's in there so you've got nose cam chase cam and more of a traditional kind of wipe out hd tail cam so, nice um, but yeah the, 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 the motion blur in the game is a bit excessive but we're going to look at bringing that in on a distance cue so the, the, the objects in the distance will be crisp and then you know as you can find the real world there you get the screen blur and things close to that kind of thing. So we talked about the visuals that I mean are just stunning for a game that's of what kind of percentage are we looking at complete? Um now you're asking <laughs> Is it ever going to be complete? Uh, so, we're, like I said, we're, we're looking at going out in Q2, so that, I guess that's a gauge of where we're at. We're probably about a week away from beta, possibly. Um, maybe a week or two. It, it, the, the thing is, when we launch this, it's going to be version 1.0. So, 1.1 will be refined, cockpit view. You know, there's everything staged after that is going to be the new improvements. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot for saying it's impressive. I mean, we've put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this. In this. Um, the one thing that, uh, as well as the visuals, is the soundtrack. Yes. So uh, you say you had a uh, uh, conversation before we uh, started to record. You said you'd had some feedback where uh, people weren't yeah. entirely satisfied. Yeah. Um, so with this type of game, 
the it kind of necessity it, it, it requires a, a certain type of music and traditionally that's been like Prodigy and Chemical Brothers and and you know we've spoken to the you know I've spoken to the, the Chemical, Chemical Brothers for instance um, now it's very well, you hard. say your um, your history is uh, Wipeout uh, Wipeout yes so that was uh, that's a game that's very famous for its uh, soundtrack. for its soundtrack yeah. so um, but the thing is uh, Can we do it again? I've grown up and I guess people's music tastes have grown up as well. It's hard to satisfy everybody. I mean, you, these days you can switch on Spotify and just select your own skin of music or whatever you want to listen to. So, you know, and, and I guess you know, attaching a big name artist to something like this is tempting from a marketing point of view. But you know, actually, for this our first iteration, we wanted to keep controls over everything. So, the narrative for each track, the design and the law of the game. Um, it's pressure. I mean, it's a. Uh, well, I guess what I'm trying to say is uh, the soundtrack should take away from that. It should be part of that. Yeah. So we we literally dozens and dozens and dozens of people we approached and music. I don't know if you. If, familiar with like licensing and stuff but it's a minefield you know you, you you go after one artist and then you have to speak to their manager who need, then needs to speak to their publisher and so you have to pay three people the music licensing rights only covers certain aspects certain platforms you know and it's and it's, it's a crazy situation so and we're only small you know we don't have a massive budget um, but there was a lot of goodwill actually we had, we had some really you know, amazing artists like um, Blackson Empire and um, we were talking to like, Oteca, you know, they, they, everybody had a lot of goodwill they wanted to do that but then we took a step back and said look you know we've got um, a desert track okay in the desert track you might have um, quite a lot of echo or you know thematically there's things within there can you put that into music and with it being licensed music you just get, get what you're given so we, we approached a guy called Leon Switch who worked with um, Cryptic Minds and did some work on Elysium he's got a, a record for doing uh, film soundtracks so it was, his, his, his work is, uh, is insane he's an insanely talented guy anyway and, it, and, and when we listened to the work it was amazing but it was a little bit slow in terms of beats per minute so then we said well would you mind having a go and then sort of, we sent him some videos of the game to try and match to the pace of the game and what he came back with was, was amazing but then he asked for like the design of the tracks we gave him the design of the tracks and he's done a fully bespoke soundtrack for the game it's really released we maybe do like a vinyl special edition version um, but yeah it's, it's great and that's, by doing that we, we haven't the name of the artist hasn't sort of strangled the game you know we've got everybody's kind of just really humble and kind of just doing something different which is really cool so. well it's it's nice to see that the title um, of this calibre is, is coming out and it's not all uh, I was going to say bells and whistles but you look at it it is bells and whistles um, but it's not all advertising. Oh, I know what you mean, yeah. And it's com commercial, which can, can ruin and, and stifle the creativity in a, in a lot of games and get in the way of it. Yeah. Um, and, it's, and it's nice to see something along these lines that you're doing what you want to do. Yeah, we will always do that. Like my experience in the game industry has traditionally been closed door development. Well, you don't speak to anybody, and you know, you know, like we, we, for instance, had conversations with guys that did Red Out, you know, and they they talk to us. I mean, you can say they're like competitive, but you know, we're just totally open and humble. It's like, well, yeah. what have you guys? What's your experience? Like? <laughs> and uh, yeah, and, and, and the fact that we're we, we're not signed to anybody, we're, we're, we're lucky in the way that we've we've arrived at this point where we we don't have any constraints we don't have any you know, publisher kind of stamps to put into the game we are our own thing so by having that we can take a bit of a punt on you know releasing a lot of content you know promising the fact that we're going to deliver lots of content and then you know and, and engage with people on co with competitions in the community and we know people personally by their name you know we're, we're thinking about getting some of the people out of the community to be community managers you know because they're the, they know the game better than anybody you know, why would you employ some the street so yeah it's, it's great you know and, uh, we'll, we'll keep it real as they say. yes so you say uh, it's maybe sort of um, quarter two that we're going to uh, going to yeah. see version yes. 1.0 I mean it could literally be 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying anything. It could, it could be May. It could, it could be. It could be the beginning of May. It could be the end of May. It could be. But what I mean is, you know, a bug happens and it could throw us out by a week or two. Just there's only there's only a few of us that can sort of deal with it. So yeah, we've been realistic about it. We're not we're not going out there with specific dates. And that's that's one of the things that you find through the bigger company because they'll be able to promise you a date, but they will finish about six months beforehand and the rest of it's fine tuning. Whereas we're fine tuning right up to the, the, the when, yeah, when you hit the button uh, to go and stuff. So yeah, we're, we're, we're saying confident in the Q2 because that's when our overdrafts need to be paid and things like that. <laughs> uh, you know, and our wives will probably stop talking to us if it goes on any club. So yeah. we're saying that. Um, you know, we're confident in saying that. Do we have any... Uh, Possibilities of bringing it to consoles. What's your? Uh, I can tell you now uh, that we've got acceptance with Sony, and Microsoft. So we've got kits on the way from Sony. We've got a kit in the office from Microsoft. We've profiled it on Xbox at the moment. We've had it running at 60 frames. There are only issues with memory. Well, that's with any game. So we profile it, get the memory down. But you know, it's a good sign that we can get something up and running 60 frames on Xbox. You know, straight out of the box yeah. from, from one another. So the signs are good. You know. With, um, we haven't started the whole, uh, you know, sort of submission testing and stuff with, with platform partners because we concentrate on the PC. Well, yeah. Yeah. Get the PC done first, profile it so it's as optimised as it can be, and hopefully there should be a seamless transition onto the console. It's exciting time, it's really. It is, yeah. Well, fantastic. We, I mean, I can't wait to actually see the uh, see version 1.0 when it hits. Possibly, may, perhaps. Watch this space, Tomorrow, people. <laughs> yes, at some point. But um, fantastic. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. <laughs> so Hello. yeah. Hello. Hello. So Formula Fusion worth uh, worth going and checking out uh, if you've got PC. I think it's coming to consoles, but there's no. I think it's coming. I think uh, PlayStation, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. I don't know if it's going to Xbox. Yeah, I think didn't he say he that they just had acceptance for PlayStation or something? Yeah. So uh, yeah, hopefully uh, watch this space. There'll be more more space. to come. More space. <laughs> now, yes, our final interview for this episode is a VR game. VR title. Yes. Yeah. Uh, one of two VR titles that we got to uh, got to play, and this I enjoyed the hell out of. Although I saying well. that, both of the VR games we played were amazingly enjoyable. The, the upside for this one for me was the fact that I didn't destroy a TV or anything else. Yeah, you did kind of go crazy, but we'll talk about that on the uh, because that one's Another we're saving one. that for the next for the last next part. Episode. Yeah, but no, you didn't destroy anything on this one, Phil, which was nice. Yeah. <laughs> But it's um, always nice when you don't. My favourite bit is the opening when you're in the shack picking the level and you've got the little pop guns. Yeah. And you could literally fire everything in the shack and it would activate something and stuff would, like, you could knock things over or things would spin around and activate alarm clocks and things like that. That was, oh my God. I could have just spent the uh, whole session, whole demo doing that. I think you, I, I saw you doing it and I was like, I think you're you're loving that much more than anything else <laughs> if they'd have just said the whole thing yeah if they'd have just said this is it i'd have been happy with that find it i was looking for wouldn't. i was looking for different things that i could just shoot and see what they did you were just like i don't really give a damn i'm just gonna shoot everything yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i was uh even looking behind me like directly yeah. behind me you could activate everything it was it was amazing they had done a really good job with that that home by the landing or whatever you want to call it yeah, yeah like the hub yeah but even even going into the main gameplay that was because i kept forgetting that i could actually duck and avoid stuff and not have to worry about getting hit i kept forgetting about yeah, that because it, it used that it used the whole functionality of the um vr like completely yeah like we're gonna make this game per so work so well you won't actually know what to do yeah. like you you actually can move out the way like you can do this with your head because i didn't even realize that there were sensors in the he the headset for it to pick up something like that yeah yeah, yeah. so when you get in the projectiles coming at you every now and again yeah. i get them say that i could hear the guy saying to me he's like oh you can duck out the way of those. I was like, oh yeah, avoiding trying to do that, but then doing that and I'm losing where I'm direction I'm shooting in and I can see cause they had a party mode 
didn't they that you could have like yes. up to five players and take it in turns for high scores and stuff and i can see that being such a laugh yeah it, it would be hilarious because they, they said it's only like rounds didn't they yeah so it's like one person does this round and the next does another and then you just see what happens yeah. Like, see who gets a high score from that rather than anything else. But that's, it's something that we're yet to really see is proper sort of multiplayer and party VR games. Yeah. And I think this might be, uh, this one, uh, bo well, both of the ones that we played are starting to, uh, you can see that they're starting to incorporate multiplayer. Yeah, VR multiplayer. Yeah. Which is, is nice. Yes. So, uh, what was the name of the game, Phil? We played Dick Wild. <laughs> Doesn't that TV? go wild? It does. <laughs> yeah, we were chatting to... Wiki Wiki Wild, but, you know. Wiki Wiki Wa Wa. <laughs> we were talking to Yoshim. Yoshim. I think that's how it's pronounced. I apologise if uh, if I my pronunciation's off. Pronunciation from bolverk games and um we were chatting about dick wild which is you are basically a, a hunter with depending on what weapons you pick yeah you could choose from machine guns to pistols to bow crossbows and bow and arrow I, I had paintball gun oh you had the paintball guns yeah i had paintball guns what did i pick i'm sure i had i'm sure mine were just like pistols i think i'd just gone for yeah, the I standard think, i think you went standard pistols i went for paintball guns because i thought that'd be funny <laughs> <laughs> but I liked the, um, you had power-ups as well. Yes. So you could have like a gun turret next to you and mines. Yeah, that you shot and then it killed everything. Yeah. But the, the, the game itself, it does this whole thing. It tricks you on the first few levels. That you, you get on a few games where it tricks you with how, how, uh, how, how easy it is to start off with. <laughs> yeah. And then it's just like, here you go, here's wave three. Oh dear. Oh yeah. dear. Oh dear. There's so much going on. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah far too much. Yeah. Like, if it was a, a standard game that didn't wasn't a VR, you'd probably be alright with it because not everyone's used to it. If it was just like, whoa, this is, uh, it's really good, but you're just like, you're not expecting that sort of jump. No, it did kind of get jump quite over. Like a crocodile. Yeah. <laughs> quite overwhelming quite quickly yeah but um but I yeah i wasn't sure if they did that on purpose or not yeah, um, i don't know if it's a full game yet is it out officially i think so i think i saw it on steam oh. i think it was on offer actually on steam for a couple of days yeah. um so whether or not it will still be on offer when this episode goes live i don't know one can only hope one can only hope um but in the meantime feast your ears on the uh, final ep uh, final interview for this episode talking about dick wild let's Let's get wild. Let's get. And that's not the name of my porno. Let's get all that dick. <laughs> dick wild. Guess what? We're back. We are back. back we are back again. <laughs> and uh, Shady's back. No stuff on Oh, okay. I thought that was where you were going with that one. Um, yes. Thank you for joining us again, folks. Not that you really have a choice. Um, but, uh, well, just don't. <laughs> this has got off to a bad start. I need a cup of coffee and some food. Um, but the uh, gentleman with us, who is probably eager to go off and get food and has just been here since the crack of dawn, uh, you are here uh, with Dick Wild. Who are you, sir? I'm Joachim. I'm the creative director of Baldwin Games. And you are here with Dick Wild. Yes. What is Dick Wild? Dick Wild is a VR game where you, yeah, you basically stand on a raft and you have all these, all these monsters coming towards you and you have to shoot them um, before they kill you. But the the whole idea about the game is that, that you are this uh, redneck exterminator who needs to like he's, he's the guy who comes when you when you have like monsters and invasive species in your in your lake uh, and then he comes and takes care of it with his wild guns and yeah now we saw uh, in the demo there's that uh, I was using the revolvers. Yep. Phil, you were using paintball, gun. paintball guns. Yep. How many? There's a whole multitude of weapons available in the game um, at your disposal. What? Yep. What is there? Well, seven. We have seven weapons right now, and it's they're very very different. We have uh, a grenade launcher where you can launch a grenade into the air and explode it with the other hand. Uh, you have a, a bow, which is like a, a 
what's called a chain lightning bolt. So it like it branches out when you hit something with it. Um, we have more. We have a, a saw blade harpoon rifle, which shoots uh, harpoons and saw blades. Um, <laughs> so yeah, there's there's a lot of, of different weird and funny things too. Yeah. So you've got uh, the area that we were playing in was the swamp. Yeah. So we were getting inundated with uh, crocodiles. There were piranhas. Um, but there were other couple of other areas. What um, is that? So we've got is that three in total, and then do we have a variation on the uh, creatures that are coming for us in those areas? Yeah. So you have you have three different areas with three uh, unique levels inside. So it's nine in total, uh, and and the areas have have different kind of creatures. So you have in the lagoon there is there is sharks. Uh, in the north there is. Um, it's called Mosasaurus, which is like a a prehistoric dinosaur creature thing. Um, yeah, so there's there's a lot of different things there. Also, the flying's are in the north. They are crows, I guess. Yeah, and ravens and stuff. So yeah. Okay. I saw uh, like, there's like a few perks when you finish each level, so you've got like a mini garden and things like that. And how many different things have you got in total for that? Uh, so right now we have we have. Uh, four boxes in total, and one of them is, is like a mine layer, it lays out mines for you. And you can use tactically to like either shoot them yourself to get like, ex like explode everything in in the, in the area, or you can get a, a sentry gun which just shoots everything that comes close to you. You can get an anti air which is a, a bunch of like firework rockets that goes up and takes out the uh, annoying seagulls and tries to shoot in the head. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we've we've had a go and um, it's out now on Steam. How long has uh, have you been working on it? Is it it's just yourself? You've got another member of your team in there. Is it just the two of you, or have you? Uh... So the guys in there right now is our publisher, um, and we are in total nine, yeah, nine people uh, with three interns. Uh, and we did we did the game in like we used three months of doing the the prototype of the game, uh, three men job, and after that we could, we went the whole team on it for four months. So, how did how did the idea of Dick Wild come about? With did you know you wanted to make a VR title, or, or did you have an idea in mind, and the VR idea came from that? So we um, we we mainly do VR games. We we did a, another game called Kid Apocalypse before this, um, which is a, a tower defense game, and we wanted to. Like when we're done with with Kitty Parkers, we needed to start on a new project, of course, and like we also need to do now when we're done with this. Um, and and I was talking with my mates about like what kind of what could be fun in VR, and he saw this video on YouTube with these um, these redneck guys on on a lake somewhere in America where. It's it's totally yeah it's built with with invasive species of, of Asian cops and and they're just throwing spears and boomerangs and using bow and arrows to shoot all these these insane fish and we're like why are we not doing this in VR we need it <laughs> so the uh, what we saw um, we were selecting the solo mode. Yep. But there's also the uh, party mode. Yeah. So what does that entail? So uh, the party mode is, is like a, where you, you get a bunch of your friends over and and then you it's like a, a pass the goggle kind of multiplayer thing where you you then you, you go in and you choose what weapons you need you want and what level and and then every time somebody dies or or wins the level then you pass on the goggles to the next one and then when everybody's done uh, it it shows you like your different high scores and who's the best on uh, among your friends. Yeah, that's the, that's the party mode. It's very cool. Yeah, it's uh, so, the uh, you say there's solo mode, it's got the full, there's uh, nine areas in total, that's the same for the party mode, you can access any part of... Both, both yes and no. Um, the party mode is a little bit different because 
when you're sitting there, like the, the game takes about I don't know, twenty minutes to a half hour to complete, like you know, one whole level. Uh, and we didn't want people to just sit there and get bored with the game when they're they're playing party mode. So we we cut it down to five instead. So it's it's five, and then you get the boss at the end um, instead of ten, and then the boss at the end. And then of course it's it's different. Um, it's different like enemies, the way they spawn up and all that stuff is, is different there. It ramps up a little bit hard, hard faster, so you okay. die faster, of course. Just tweaks for the more party yeah. uh, atmosphere. So, it's, uh, we're seeing it on uh, Oculus on there. Uh, it's available on the Vive as well, I believe, and um, I'm coming to PSVR, hopefully, I, I hear. It's, it's like, we need to, to figure out how to to get it to work and I mean it, right now it's it's already working but we need to tweak a few things and we we think it'll be like in, in around two months and things out there. So looking forward to sort of the summer and hopefully uh, Dick Wild coming to a PSVR soon. Um, so yeah, if you want to, because uh, I see you've got a, you're doing 50%, 15, sorry, I'll make that, yeah, uh, off uh, currently this week on Steam. Um, so this is your turn now, pitch to the uh, listeners why they should uh, go and check out Dick Wild. Yeah, definitely go check out Dick Wild because it's it's a very fast-paced and, and hectic uh, shooter. So it's a wave-based shooter, um, and and what you you really gotta do like go down and squatting and, and moving from side to side. So it's it's great fun. Like there's a lot of a lot of intense battles there. And yeah, we agree because yeah. uh, I don't think Phil quite wrecked the place, but uh, he did almost hit a couple of people in the head. <laughs> get in my way. <laughs> <laughs> but you do you just get too immersed in VR. Oh, that's your it. problem, Phil. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you very much for joining us. So there we go. All that dick. And all that wild. <laughs> that's the, the last of the interviews for this episode. We've got... Have we got five more four more for the next one uh it might actually yeah, be think... six more to be honest wow. six more. let me just have a look let me just check let me just one two three four yeah six in the next one six um in the next one but they're slightly there's a couple that are slightly shorter yeah and uh yeah so that'll be the last the fourth and final part of our edx res interview coverage and then normal programming will resume hopefully hopefully we need to get the uh get the band back together the band, uh, it's, it's always difficult to get the band back together it always is always difficult because we've we've we're off we're, we're doing our own things and uh we we may also have uh extra member of the team joining us depending we've on, had them on prior, if it yeah. is the person i think it is yes yeah, yeah yeah uh we're just we're seeing how things going we're trying to expand the team here and it's just getting everyone's schedules to uh to sync up and try and sort something out so yeah which is never easy no never easy getting everyone's schedule to work out at exactly the same time no at the same point of the day no. in the same way <laughs> No, if the uh, planets align, then uh, we might just we, uh, manage it. We might. I'd, we certainly won't be able to record a new episode uh, for Star Wars Day. No, not this time. Which is unfortunate. But um, this episode I will, will be, be watching some Star Wars. Yeah, I think I might. Oh, no, I can't watch Force Awakens in 3D because I've changed my projector. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, but I might member. try and watch what member? Hey, member! Hey, um, member! Hey, member! I might try and watch Force Awakens. Sounds. I I'm probably going to watch New Hope. Nice. We'll have to see. Uh, but if uh, if we don't put out another episode before that, then Happy Star Wars Day, everyone! Happy Day of the Fourth. Indeed. May the Fourth. Um, don't don't ever turn your back on May Sixth. No, because that's. Sith is yeah. don't they don't they say that some some do, something yeah, not some, everyone. something like that any anything you want to add to uh, this last remaining last episode? remaining bits of this episode Phil no no anything <laughs> that you want to add to the last remaining bits of this episode Stefan no I don't think so no? should we we'll, should we do uh, the normal end thing yeah where we go hey I'm I've been Monkey Man Phil 
Oh, and I've been High Stefanition. Don't forget See, that's to... That's a normal ending. It is. <laughs> Don't forget, check us out. Facebook, Noah's Arcade UK, and Twitter, Noah's Arcade UK. Uh, you can find us at our website, noahsarcadeuk.com, where you'll find reviews and articles written by our fine selves. Yep. And others soon, hopefully. So, yeah, in the meantime, yeah. thank you for joining us. Uh, We've we'll been see happy you again to soon. serve you. Yes, always, <laughs> always, Phil. Always. See you soon, folks. Ta-ra. That's <laughs> all, folks. <laughs> da 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 da